welcome to my GIS lab. Today we want to talk about coral place maps. Coral place maps are useful to show the big picture of regional differences. And while anyone can make a map, the key question is if the map conveys an easy to understand story and most importantly, a truthful story. There are many opportunities to lie with your map, either innocently because you don't know any better or because you chose to do so. You have to understand your data and you have to make many choices and that puts the responsibility to, to you to make the right choices. After all, maps are not objective but your version of reality. And you, the map maker, are in the driver's seat. So imagine you have a quantitative data ready to go and there's always one thing you always have to do when you're making a coral place map. You have to normalize your data. We have here Lethbridge census tracts and I have displayed the total population for each polygon, a field called C total, and using the quantile method for my symbology. We will discuss this method in detail later. But does this map make any sense? The story of the map is, where do people live in Lethbridge? And the largest numbers are associated with the darkest colors. So the story that is conveyed here is that the inner urban areas are relatively empty, while some outer areas have the largest populations. That of course is nonsense. So what is wrong? Remember that a coral place map always shows values relative to the polygon size. So for instance here we are comparing values of one polygon that has a size of about one tenth of a square kilometer, shape area is in square kilometers, and a polygon with the same class has about seven square kilometers. So this polygon here is 70 times larger than this one here. And we're using real data, we're using population data to symbolize them. That is wrong. So what do we have to do? We have to normalize the data. And we can do that in two different ways. We can normalize the data by dividing the population values by the area of the shape. If I go up to my attribute table, I already have added a new field called population per square kilometer. I have my field here, C total, which is my population totals. And I have another field called shape area, which is my area in square kilometers. I right click, calculate field, Please don't be intimidated by a number of things that don't make much sense to you. Code block uh, or the helpers here. These are things that we discuss mainly in the fourth year class. The simple equation we want to do here is population per square kilometer is my C total divided by my shape area and run. And now I can use this new field and we see instantly the difference in the map. Now this map makes sense, highest population areas in the south, north and west of Lethbridge and the surrounding more rural areas have lower population densities. We can also achieve the normalization in an easier way. And in order to do that, I want to copy this file first so we can make an easier comparison and paste it into the same map. So now we have two identical maps. Let me turn off this one here to preserve it. Now the bottom one here, instead of showing pop per square kilometer, I want to actually show my total population, but now I'm going to normalize it by using again the shape area field. And now if I compare these two maps, you see I turn one on, I turn the other one off, they are identical. 
So both ways result in the same normalization which you have to carry out. So either use the normalization field right in the symbology or to make it permanent add a new field uh, and do the calculations directly in your attribute table. And we continue mapping our population densities across Lethbridge. I have copied the file five more times, so I have six different versions of the same file in here, and I'm just going to display it in six different ways. The first way here is just a reminder that when we look at the legend, we see that the lowest values are assigned uh, the darkest colors and vice versa. That is the wrong order. Dark colors are by default and by convention associated with higher values. The best map is always that that is easy to understand even without looking at the legend. So this is not an option. Here the same data as we have displayed them once before. We have quantiles. We have five different quantiles. And if we go to symbology, I can now edit the labels here and change them instead of having these numbers here that are really not that well understood by the general public. Maybe I put in here and say lowest 20% middle 20% And now this legend makes way more sense. We can see that each category, each color has 20% of the population and we can see where that particular 20% is. Easiest way to display this in our symbology is using the histogram. Here we have first of all a histogram from the lowest values to the highest values in their frequencies. And also here are the same colors that we use in our legend. So we can see that the highest 20% are distributed over a wide range of values ranging from about 3,600 people per square kilometer to about 8,500. Um, and while the lowest one is a much, much narrower band. Let's compare this to other classification methods that are available. I have here equal interval we can see that the interval ranges are all the same. And if I go to the symbology, again using the histogram, these bins are all the same size. We have much more number of polygons represented in light yellow than we have in the dark brown. Equal interval is the easiest to understand by the general public. The only one thing that doesn't make sense here is we have very odd class intervals that we would like to probably edit a little bit. We could maybe do some rounding here. Let's look at natural breaks. And the histogram reveals that using the natural breaks mathematical algorithm, which automatically breaks down all your data into naturally occurring groups, that the group size is different and the group range is different. So we have various number of polygons per group and we have various uh, group sizes. So that makes it complicated for a person to understand and really read the data. What this type of map is good at is to reveal differences within the neighborhoods. Moving on here is a manual classification. I used the classification from quintiles and rounded them off a little bit. This in principle is not much different from, from the quantiles but now the values are nicely uh, understood and, and the map uh, is not quite different from the quantiles. The standard deviation tells us the mean value. So here is the average of all our 
population densities. So this yellow band here in the middle is between one half standard deviation below and above the mean. So it's this range here. And then only this taupe color here is below those further. And then we go up here and we have here a standard deviation of about one here and about two here. A standard deviation of two means that 95% of your samples uh, fall within two standard deviations. That means these values here are the highest 5%, the highest densities that make up only 5% of the population. So that is a meaningful map altogether. So again, going backwards, let's just compare the different stories that are told by the various classification techniques. We are looking at standard deviation. There are some really dark spots with high densities. Let's look at the manual. Uh, that paints quite a different picture altogether. Here's our natural breaks. Here's our equal interval. And here is our quantile. Now that we understand the differences between the various classification methods, we need to choose one. There is a great book with a thought-provoking title. And if I go to chapter number 10, the title is Making Nonsense of the Census. Well, let's see what this nonsense is all about. The challenge now is to choose the best classification method. The contract classification results in relative differences, are easy to understand and tell a truthful story. The equal interval classification has very few polygons with high values, but many with low values. Some details seem to be lost because the equal interval classification should be used for a data set that is normally distributed. And we can quickly test this graphically. We right click, create chart, click on histogram. I choose, of course, my population density. I add the normal distribution to the chart. I add the median and also my standard deviation. So now here is the mean. Here is one standard deviation below and above the mean. There is a median, so half the values are below this value and the other half is above the median. And we can clearly see whilst the right side of the data set roughly matches a standard distribution, the left side doesn't match it at all. There is one other way how we can check if our data set matches a standard distribution, and that is by creating another kind of chart, and this time we're choosing a QQ plot. A QQ plot is special in that it shows our standard deviation as a straight line and the x-axis here is actually in standard deviations and here are our actual values. If our data set follows a standard distribution then the points of the data set would follow this straight line. It's quite obvious that both high values and low values do not follow this line, and therefore this data set is not normally distributed. Natural breaks do not provide a meaningful and easy to understand story, so I would not choose this. The manual distribution was originally based on the quantile distribution, and we see that the class sizes are roughly the same. The manual ones have simply been rounded off to some easier to read and understand values. So similar stories between the two, 
So my final choice would be the quantile map because it tells a truthful and repeatable story. And if we label the map with percentages, then it is easy to understand to most people. I have two examples here. The one is imagine you are working for a newspaper and it is your task to assign uh, new people for newspaper routes. And for argument's sake, let's say here for these five different areas, you need uh, people to add them to their route or you want to find new people to do the newspaper route there. Which of these classifications would you use to convince someone that this will be a good job to have? Would you use this one, or equal interval, or natural breaks, or the manual? I'm not going to the standard deviation right now. So which of these ones tell the story of having an easiest paper route? On the other hand, imagine you're working for a real estate company and you have a house on markets in these five different areas, and you want to convince your potential buyers that these neighborhoods are particularly good neighborhoods. What you use in terms of population density, the quantile map, the equal interval map, the natural breaks map, or the manual classification. Good questions to have, and they are not always easy to answer. We will discuss the answers soon. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.